Just in playing game at number one on night two of the play in tournament in the NBA, Joel Embiid. One of his five assists to Kelly Oubre Jr. That was a big one because Philadelphia then hit all their free throws. And as much as Miami tried to make this thing a game late, and they made it close indeed. Tyler Hero with a three right at the end. But Miami could only get within one. And the Philadelphia 76ers have won 105-104. And Philly claims the seven seed in the Eastern Conference. They will be taking on the New York Knickerbockers in the first round of the NBA playoffs. Jimmy Butler had 19 points. Tyler Hero led Miami with 25, but the Heat fall for the second year in a row in game one of the play-in tournament. And just like a season ago, they'll have a chance in a second game. They'll await the winner of tonight's late game between the Chicago Bulls and the Atlanta Hawks. And for more on play-in game number one on Wednesday night, day two of the NBA play-in tournament, we welcome from CBS Sports, Colin Ward-Hennigan and Brad Bakken. Uh, Colin, let's start with you, because at halftime, this game looked like, well, the kind of game Miami wanted to play. It was pretty ugly. The Heat were up 12. How did Philly turn this thing around and come out a winner here? Yeah, I mean, I think the main thing that they did was that they didn't beat themselves. In the first half, they were turning the ball over. Miami had 17 points off turnovers. That went down to five in the second half. Philadelphia, you saw they made their free throws down the stretch. And if you're playing against the Miami team, look, you know they're not the most dynamic offensive team. You can't give them free points in transition, and that's what they were doing in the first half. So, you know, obviously, a, a Nick, Nicholas Batum goes nuts and hits a bunch of threes in the second half. You can't really predict that. But what they really did was they stopped trying to force feed Joel Embiid every single play. That's where they really ran into trouble in the first half. Uh, Miami was playing that zone. The, the, they just had trouble getting the ball into the big man, let alone letting him go to work. Uh, so by shooting the ball, uh, guys like Nicole, Nicholas Batum, Buddy Heald, Kelly Oubre, they really opened up the floor and then that gave Joel Embiid a chance to go to work a little bit so they they narrowly escaped but they did it because they didn't beat themselves in the second half yeah and, and to follow up on that yeah certainly the turnovers were the end result that was taking them out of the game in the first half but how were those turnovers happening you have to credit uh, Miami's own defense and the funk that was putting Philly's offense into but they were so stagnant so second guessing everything they were doing they were hesitant they were not getting the ball into the high post all of that stuff that we have seen from Nick Nurse's offense this year in terms of dribble handoffs two man games flowing offense it completely stalled to an almost stop for most of the first half so now they're late in the shot clock they're forcing passes and that's how those turnovers happen I think you can narrow down how this happened in the second half to one word tempo everybody thinks about pace and tempo in terms of full court transition getting out in the open court but tempo in the half court is how Philadelphia won this game they started popping their passes they started coming off dribble handoffs with more emphasis they were getting into the teeth of the defense how do you attack a zone you get to the high post area and force it to collapse that's how Nick Batum and Buddy Heel were ending up open for three pointers campaign hit a corner three off the court collapse so that was the key attacking with assertive half court tempo when the Sixers do that they get good shots when Joel Embiid stands there and surveys from 30 feet out and they are not running with tempo everything grinds to a halt and they turn the ball over and that really was the difference in the game was the up tempo of the half court offense for Philly in the second half yeah we got to give some more flowers to Nicholas Batum 20 points six of ten from three-point land really gave Philly a spark uh uh, look, Brad, the way Miami played in this game, they only lost by one on the road at Philadelphia where Joel Embiid got back into this thing in the second half. Is the way Miami played in this game good enough to get past Atlanta and or Chicago? They got one more chance left on Friday. And if not, what do they got to clean up? It should be. They're a better team. They looked every bit like the team. I mean, I was already booking my train tickets to the conference finals, watching them in the first half. It's like Miami's going to do this again. They're going to muck this whole thing up. They're going to turn it into an ugly defensive battle, and they're going to make just enough shots to win. And you can just see the blueprint playing out. And yes, they can do that. They're a better team, a significantly better team than Chicago or Atlanta. Uh, but this was a big loss because now when you look beyond that game, 
They're going to have to go up against Boston in the first round. This was a major, major game tonight. So at least give yourself, and this is no disrespect to the Knicks, but a winnable series in the second round. So Miami really shot itself in the foot tonight, not being able to convert offensively. The Jimmy Butler injury didn't help. We'll have to watch that over the coming days, see how his status is for Friday and moving forward if they get uh, past that. But they just don't have any margin for error offensively. I think they have enough to get past Chicago or Atlanta, but tall, tall order having to go up against Boston. Now, tonight was the game both of these teams needed. Colin, I'm going to flip it to you. How do you handicap the series now coming up between the Sixers and the Knicks, the seven versus two? Who do you like stylistically here? Yeah, I mean, I think the Knicks have the advantage. They, they've been playing well all season with OG Ananobi particularly. I know they don't have Julius Randle, uh, but what Jalen Brunson brings to the table, I mean, he's just become an alpha, alpha superstar, and I think he's going to continue that against Philadelphia's defense. They also have the ability to spread out Philadelphia with their shooting around the perimeter. So, you know, uh, it's exactly what Brad said. Philadelphia is going to have to move the ball. They're going to have to get the Knicks defense moving. Another thing I'm looking at in that series, uh, the Philadelphia Philadelphia 76ers are not a good defensive rebounding team, and the Knicks are the best offensive rebounding team in the entire NBA. Uh, they absolutely pounded the boards against the Cleveland Cavaliers last year in the first round to get through that series. So uh, Philadelphia really needs to be conscious about hitting the boards, boxing out, doing the little things, because much like the Miami Heat, the Knicks are a well-coached team. They're disciplined. They're not going to beat themselves. So, again, Philadelphia needs to limit the turnovers, pick up those defensive rebounds, and, and do the little things to be able to win that series. But to me, I still think the Knicks have the edge with the way that they've played all season long. Brad, you get the last word on uh, Sixers and Knicks. What do you think? I think Colin hit it right there in terms of the offensive rebounding advantage that New York could have. Isaiah Hardenstein, top shelf offensive rebounder, and they have Mitchell Robinson back. And so that's the key to me is they are going to be able to take advantage. When Joel Embiid tonight, he did not look well conditioned. And you can talk about the rim protector, but he did not get very many contested rebounds tonight. And if this conditioning is not where it needs to be a week from now, and he's fatiguing late in games, that's where offensive rebounds kill you. The Knicks get offensive rebounds even under normal conditions, but when teams are tired at the end, and they've got all these dogs, Josh Hart is another one who's always going after every rebound. Those extra possessions are going to hurt the Sixers. I also want to say one word here about the Julius Randle uh, injury. It hurts in the playoffs. Having isolation scores, guys who can break a defense down on their own, when you get into the latter part of a series, these teams have become so well scouted by games four, five, six. The schematics don't open you up for as many shots late in the series. They're on to you by then. So you have to have guys that can create one-on-one. -on -one. And the Knicks are now down one guy. But it has given them clarity. They don't have to now struggle between who's going to get the ball, Randall at the high post, Brunson uh, in a pick and roll. It is Jalen Brunson's team, and he is a superstar shot creator. With that shooting around him, Dante DiVincenzo, all of these guys that space the floor, I do give the advantage to the Knicks uh, because of the offensive rebound and because of the clarity of Jalen Brunson being a primary shot creator late in games. That's Brad Bakken and Colin Ward Hennigan from CBS Sports bringing the heat on a Wednesday night. Gentlemen, thank you so much. Speaking of bringing the heat, Philadelphia 76ers 9-0 in their last nine games. In hockey, nobody wants to see a hot goalie. In the NBA, you might not want to see a hot team. And right now, the Sixers just aren't losing. Their ninth win is the win that puts them from the play-in into the playoff. The Sixers are now the number seven seed in the Eastern Conference. They will take on the New York Knicks in round one of the playoffs. The Miami Heat will need to win on Friday against either the Atlanta Hawks or the Chicago Bulls to claim the eight seed. Full highlights and reaction and coaches press conferences and analysis all coming your way for the first playing game of the night the Sixers beat the Heat but it was tight we'll be right back on the HQ